after a year and seven months, 32 videos, and a whole bunch of good and not so good games, my Sonic the Hedgehog retrospective is finally coming to an end. It's been a long, sometimes arduous journey, but I've finally made it. And I'm going out with the most recent non-kart racing or iPhone related Sonic game, Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episode 2. While the first installment of Sonic the Hedgehog 4 was met with a lukewarm response from fans, Sega had no choice but to make a follow-up. I mean, you can't call the first one Episode 1 and not make an Episode 2. Not to mention, it ended on a cliffhanger. So, Sega and Sonic Team decided to tinker with the engine and complete the Sonic 4 story with Episode 2 in May of 2012. It was released to pretty much every platform imaginable, except the Wii, because <laughs> who has a Wii, right? It's not like it's one of the five best-selling video game consoles of all time or anything. But were Wii owners actually the lucky ones? Was it worth it for Sega to go back and finish the Sonic 4 saga? Let's take a look at Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episode 2. As always, let's first look at the story. Uh, it's hardly there. Episode 2 seems to take place sometime after Sonic CD and Sonic 2. Metal Sonic, it turns out, survived his last encounter with Sonic and teams back up with Dr. Eggman to rebuild a brand new Death Egg. Meanwhile, Sonic teams up with his buddy Tails to stop Dr. Eggman. That... that's pretty much it. Eggman's building a new Death Egg with the help of Metal Sonic and Sonic and Tails need to stop him. It's simple, but it doesn't have to be complicated for the kind of game it is. I think it's fitting. Now, the big controversy with the first installment was the gameplays, specifically the physics engine. Fans felt it didn't properly replicate the classic Sonic experience, and while I myself didn't find it terrible, it was certainly a noticeable drop in quality. Does Episode 2 fix this? Yes, it does! Episode 2 feels a lot more like a classic Sonic game than Episode 1 does. For one thing, you don't uncurl from a ball when you spin dash off a ledge, but also, it just feels better. Jumps are less floaty, you can't just walk up the side of a platform, you don't stop on a dime, it's a much better built game. That said, I do feel it isn't up to snuff with the classic engine from Generations. I honestly don't see why they didn't just take the engine from that game, but oh well. It's not that noticeable. It's certainly playable, and handles much better than the first episode. Beyond that, gameplay is exactly what you'd expect. You run from left to right, jumping on platforms, solving puzzles, avoiding enemies. You can still spin dash and homing attack like the first one. The big gimmick this time around is that Tails is by your side like the classic games, but instead of just being an immortal death magnet, this time you can use a variety of team-up moves to overcome different obstacles. At any time during the stage, all you have to do is press the right button, and Sonic and Tails will do a move depending on your location. If you're in the air, Tails will grab Sonic and fly him to a higher location for a brief period of time. This is especially helpful in situations where you might otherwise fall to your death. When you're underwater, Tails acts as a propeller, allowing you to move much quicker around the entire body of water instead of just the floor. While you're on the ground, Sonic and Tails curl into a ball together and become an unstoppable boulder of death. This move, to me, seems a bit broken. While you can't turn around while in this mode, you can go incredibly fast and destroy literally any enemy that gets in your way. If it wasn't for the fact that platforming can be hard to accomplish in the ball form, there'd be no reason to not use it at all. There's also a screen clearing super move you can get out of an item monitor. It's very rare and not as useful as you'd think, considering the enemy placement in this game. It does net you quite a few rings, so it's good if you want to get to that special stage. Speaking of stages, I think the stages in this game are all really cool, and a lot less copy and paste than the stages in Episode 1. Once again, there's only four of them, but each has three acts and a boss stage. The first stage, Sylvania Castle Zone, takes place in some sort of abandoned castle area, with fallen pillars and stone platforms to jump on. It's pretty unique in terms of first zones. I mean, it's not all bright green and sunny. It also features a number of different water sections, which makes me question what I did to deserve starting a game with a water level. I'm sure it's mainly to show how to use Tails' propeller move, but still, water stage is bite. The second stage, White Park Zone, is my favorite in the game. While it starts out like your average snow level, the second stage actually takes place on a giant roller coaster, and throughout all of the acts you can see the snowy amusement park in the background. It's a very unique idea for a Sonic stage, and one I wish they would have done more with. As it is, though, it's still very enjoyable. The third zone, Oil Desert Zone, is also pretty cool. 
It's sort of a combination of Sandopolis and Oil Ocean, and while I know that sounds like the worst thing ever, it's far easier than either of those zones. The backdrop of the stage is filled with machinery and oil drilling equipment. It looks really neat, and the stage is a lot of fun, too. There's parts where you have to outrun the sand as the room fills with it, and other parts where you have to run on the top of hot oil that these enemies set on fire. It's got a lot of unique aspects to it, and I had a lot of fun playing it. The fourth zone, Sky Fortress, is probably my least favorite. You start off with a mostly uninteresting Sky Chase ripoff, and then you wind up on what is essentially Wing Fortress meets Flying Battery. You must run along Eggman's ship, avoiding pits and blasting out of tubes. It's fun, but the least interesting in terms of design. Now, while not technically a full zone, before you get to the final boss, you do have to go through the Death Egg Mark II. This section is really cool. It's essentially just build up to the bosses, but you're running through the Death Egg and gravity keeps switching on you. One second you'll be running up a wall and then gravity flips and you'll be back to normal. It's a very cool concept that I wish they would have fleshed out into a full three-act zone. I would have loved to play it. Now, since I brought up the bosses, I should mention them because, yes, they are my least favorite part of the game. But not because they're horrible, they're just... a little much, I guess? Each of the bosses is a multi-phase boss that takes some time to finish off. For example, the first boss is a giant flower-like robot. You have to use tails to fly up and attack Eggman when he's exposing himself. It's simple enough, but after a while, the tentacles will latch onto Eggman and he'll start a whole new pattern. Which is fine, but I just feel it's a little off of what the original Sonic games had in terms of simplicity with the bosses. The Egg Scrap Mech boss is especially tedious. You basically have to wait for him to drop these boxes to you to be able to attack him. Even after you do that, you still have to finish him off in a different phase. Again, not a terrible boss, but it could have been better. To the game's credit though, the Metal Sonic boss battles are pretty cool. Especially like the Sonic CDS race with him right before the final boss. Speaking of the final boss, this thing is really tedious. You have to fight Eggman in this heart thing that's surrounded by three rings. You have to make your way to Eggman by getting to the center ring. The more you hit him, obstacles start appearing on the other rings. By the end, the entire contraption seems to be covered in electric currents, making it hard to even get to the center ring. And if you end up taking too long, Eggman just throws you aside once you get there. It's really frustrating. It's not necessarily hard or unfair. It just kind of tedious and annoying. I don't really know how to describe it. I don't think it's a terrible final boss, but I didn't exactly enjoy it. Your mileage may vary, I suppose. So, if my least favorite thing in the game is the bosses, then that must mean I don't hate the special stages that I normally hate, right? Well, actually, yeah. The special stages in this game aren't terrible. Much like how Episode 1 took the Sonic 1 special stages and updated them, Episode 2 takes the Sonic 2 special stages and updates those, though they're much easier. The stages don't curve as much, the draw distance for the rings is more than a 2 second grace period, and Tails can't lose rings when he's being controlled by the computer. It's pretty fantastic. Though the catch is, you do have to collect more rings in each stage, especially in the later stages, which can be really difficult. But overall, I'd say the special stages are pretty good, and definitely some of the easiest in the series. I got supersonic pretty much no problem. On the technical side of things, I think the game looks really good for a downloadable title. The ba backgrounds especially. The stages are very vivid and colorful with lots of things to look at and enjoy while playing. And the character models don't look too bad either, though they could be better. But hey, for 15 bucks, I'll take it. Audio wise, the music is once again pretty bad. They still try to do that blend of old school and new school thing, and it just comes off like somebody throwing things at a synthesizer. It's really unappealing. I will say the music is better than Episode 1's, but not by a whole lot. Disappointing for a Sonic game. Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 2 is a good game. Is it a great game? No, but for what it's worth, I really enjoyed playing it. The physics are improved from the first one, the addition of Tails, while sometimes broken, is cool, and I'm sure it's even better with a second player. The stages are unique and interesting, the Metal Sonic encounters are rad, the special stages don't suck, and the graphics are pretty good. All in all, I'd say it's worth checking out, especially if you can catch it on sale on the PSN, XBLA, or Steam. If you're a Sonic fan, I'm sure you've already checked it out, but if you haven't, I'd say go for it. One last thing I should mention is that if you purchase both Episode 1 and 2 on the same platform, you get an additional story mode where you get to play as Metal Sonic. 
It's only 4 acts long, and the stages are built from assets from the first game, but it's pretty cool. It basically tells the story of what Metal Sonic was doing between Sonic CD and Episode 2. The stages are short, and Metal Sonic plays exactly like Sonic, but hey, Metal Sonic is cool, so that's alright by me. I didn't have to pay for anything extra, so I can't really complain. And with that, I conclude my look at the Sonic the Hedgehog series. It definitely took me longer than I wanted to, but I can't say it wasn't a fun ride. I played some great games, and some terrible ones. Got some nice comments, and a lot of really negative ones. I knew going in that with a fanbase as dedicated as the Sonic fanbase, I was sure to be met with a lot of criticism. But I've had fun, and I don't regret anything one bit. Now, I do plan to keep reviewing stuff, but I don't know what just yet. I don't have anything planned. I might touch on a few other Sonic games when they're released, and I might do a couple Sonic-related lists here soon. But for now, I'm taking a break from the blue blur. Whether you believe me or not, I do really love the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, and even the worst games have a special place in my heart. It's been a huge part of my life, and that's why I decided to do this retrospective in the first place. Just because I don't like every Sonic game doesn't make me any less of a fan than somebody who does. And hey, don't they always say, in order to truly love something, you have to be able to hate it and realize it's flaws? 